right so sound recording started so over here I have my Raspberry Pi set up with the DS18 B20 temperature sensor uh, 4.7 uh, K ohm resistor and then three wires the red one is a power wire connected to a 3 volt uh, pin and the GPO on uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, the brown one is a one wire bus, so that is the data transfer, and then the black one is ground. All connected to the Raspberry Pi here. Um, now, if we. Where did I start? Yes, now if we go into the Raspberry Pi here, I'm gonna quickly reboot it to show you kind of how it works and what I want to do with it. So on, I have a script in my Raspberry Pi that every time it boots up, uh, it sends me an email with uh, the current IP address. Uh, and it sends it to this email right here. This is my Gmail. Um, and while we wait for that to pop up, uh, while the Raspberry Pi reboots, I'm gonna just talk about kind of all the programs in the Raspberry Pi and what they do. So I have one program, uh, or one script that sends me an email as I talked about. Uh, then I have a script that gets the output from the temperature sensor, converts that into degrees Celsius, and does some other things and stores um, all those temperatures uh, for each day. So each day it creates a new script, and then it stores, um, and for every hour it runs and then stores the temperatures for every hour under that under that specific text file. Then new day can it creates a new text file, and then stores all the temperatures and time uh, of the temperature recording in that file. Also, I have a script that uh, reads uh, the latest file and uploads uh, every hour. It runs and it uploads the latest temperature to Google Spreadsheet. And also, I have one that uh, looks at the temperature for the current day and then displays that in a graph diagram that I will show you later uh, using HTML and then displaying it in the browser. Uh, so, if my there we go. Uh, here is my IP address. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that um, into. There we go. All right, look at that. All right, so um, just uh, back quickly. So, okay, I got the IP address linked to my Pi. I uh, just bumped up the font a little so you could see a bit better. Um, checking out the files here in my home directory. So the script that sends us an email is saved under. And the send email or send mail um, uh, directory. So if we have a look here, we can see it's the uh, semi little as actually just a test script, and this is actually the one that we run uh, at startup. Um, so before I go into more detail about that, I just want to go quickly through uh, all the other. Um, scripts that I have uh, the other ones are stored under their weather station um, so this is a script that gets the temperature or raw output data from the temperature sensor converts it into uh, converts it into degrees Celsius and also it stores it under this directory right here um, we can go have a look at that so uh, for every day as you can see it stores a new it creates a new file with the current date in the in the file name. So under all of these, um, there are a bunch of uh, dates and temperatures, which I will show you later. Uh, but this uh, saves uh, the, the the date and the temperature this directory under these files. And these files are important because it's what uh, the weather uploader script and the temp uh, server script is is what they use to get the temperature uh, and the and the date. So the weather uploader uh, is the script that uploads to uh, Google Spreadsheet, which I'll go into later, and then the temp server is what creates the HTML document uh, and does some other stuff. So the HTML document that it creates is the one right here. So this is the one that we will be, uh, we use to we display using the n and nc command and cat command uh, later. So I'm gonna go into um, I'm gonna go into into the 
yeah, into the send mail. Uh, now, actually, first I'm going to show you um, how these are run. So all these files that I talked about, the one that sends the email, uh, one that gets the temperature, one's the one that uploads to Google Spreadsheet, and the one that creates the HTML document are all run automatically every hour. Uh, as you can see here, so the send mail or the mail uh, script uh, is run upon reboot of the Raspberry Pi. Then it sleeps for 60 seconds, uh, sort of make sure that the Raspberry has actually gotten an IP address before it tries to send it to me. Um, and then runs this, which sends me an email. And then the other uh, get temperature is run at the first minute of every hour. Uh, that's the one that gets the temperature from the sensor and then stores it in a, in a text file. And then we have the uploader, which uploads to Google Spreadsheet and the temperature, the server, uh, which creates the HTML document, they both run at every second minute of every hour. Uh, and I, so they run one minute later than, um, than, what, than when the get temp uh, script gets the temperature. So to make sure that uh, you actually have a temperature to use uh, before running these two scripts, which heavily rely on the, the files that this one creates. So if we go out of there, um, we can go into um, this one and have a look at uh, the uh, mail.py. So as you can see here, it also has a text file that's called IP address .txt. That's because mail.py script actually creates um, uh, and or rewrites. Um, uh, a file, a text file, with the current IP address, uh, which I was going to use, but it's not actually used for anything, so you can just ignore that. This is the important part. Um, check output is the, is the Python command to run bash script. So it runs this bash script, which gets uh, the current IP address, um, and then this kind of takes out unnecessary characters, so we end up with this variable here, which uh, contains the IP address, and then we use check output again. Uh, to run this bash script, which is what actually sends me the email. And so it sends me here, it sends me this variable, which is my IP address. Uh, it sends it to Marcus, uh, the IT, Mark the IT student at uh, gmail.com, which is my Gmail address. Um, as you can see, uh, so that's how that works. Uh, let's go back to. Let's go back to here and have a look at the, all the other, the weather. Uh, weather station files, which I store on the subdirectory weather stations. Um, the get temperature, let's have a look at that first. Um, since it's the first one that runs a very hour. Um, so what this does is it, I'm not going to go into mu too much detail because it'll just be confusing and it be confusing to me as well because I have to kind of read this properly to understand how it works. But um, in essence, I have them, them pretty well labeled, so this is what reads the raw temperature output. Um, sorry, um, this is what converts into uh, degrees Celsius. Um, this is what gets the current date and creates uh, the file, uh, or creates the file name, uh, the, the date that's to be used in the file name when storing or creating the, the text file and also getting the date to be stored next to the temperature. Uh, we'll show you what these files look like in a minute. And then we have the function that saves the temperature. Um, uh, so if we go into, so I think, no, that was right. No, I was wrong. So if we're going to, yeah, there it is, temp date. Ah, temp data. Sorry, yeah. If we're going to temp data, which is where the so uh, the get temp uh, script uh, saves uh, the data under this subdirectory here, temp data. If we have a look again. Here are all the text files. If we have a look at one of them, <laughs> it's very late. Excuse my typing. Here we go, so this is what it looks like. 
for every hour it runs and then it stores um, the date with a label date um, here. So it's got the day, the month, the year, and the time, and then the temperature uh, with the label temp. These, uh, especially the temp label is used later to find all the temperatures in these, uh, in the in the files here. Um, so for every hour it appends a new time and date um, until there's a new, until the next day where uh, obviously this number changes because there's another day and then it creates another uh, file and starts again. Uh, that's what that does. So if we go back and then uh, these files are again very important because it's what the other files use. So if you have a look at Weather Uploader, which is what uploads to Google Spreadsheet. Uh, again, not going to go into too much detail. Uh, so this part is what establishes some variables um, and get some credentials so that makes us able to actually upload to the Google Spreadsheet. And this function right here is what I guess the ter current date and then finds the file um, with the temperatures for the current current date. So it finds the newest file with the, where the date of today matches uh, the, the name of the file text file where the temperature and date is stored and then it yeah uh, so that's what that does basically um, then it um, yeah so it gets the temperature and data uh, then it writes it to the Google spreadsheet and uploads it to there so um, all this kind of does it it removes the date and the temp uh, labels that I showed you earlier in the file and then uploads just the raw um, temperature and and date um, from the latest, so it's the latest appended uh, uh, entry in the latest file. So it doesn't actually upload all of the file every time, it only uploads every hour it runs and then it uploads the latest entry to the latest text file containing the date and the temperature. And I'm going to show you that right now so I have it here so you can see. It starts here, it's quite long, it's been running for a couple of days as you can see from the files as well. Um, so every hour uh, like five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see it uploads with the date and the tenth of temperature, um, which brings us to right now, which is the latest one. What I was at eleven. You can see it uh, twelve past eleven, twenty-eight degrees. Um, so back here to see the last sort of script, which is the temp server dot pi, which is what creates an HTML document. Um, which uh, I can then display in the browser, which I'm going to show you later. Um, oh yeah. So, what this does, this does, same. Um, not so important. Uh, it uses uh, the uses a, a JavaScript library called the chart.js, um, which I have linked to in. Here, so this is a link to that, and then it uses JavaScript, uh, CSS, and HTML5, and obviously Python 3 as well. Um, so this is what uh, checks the document, gets the raw document uh, for the current date, and then also so we guess the date, and then also uh, um, guess the date so we can display it in the heading of the of the HTML document. I will show you that later. Um, then it checks. Uh, checks the time so I'm going to show you how this works but every so the graph starts at 12 p.m. and then goes all the way to 11 p.m. again so it goes for 24 hours um, the thing is if I start recording in the middle of the day uh, then I can't start displaying the first temperature of that day uh, at 12 p.m. or at 1 a.m. or 0 a.m. because uh, that would be wrong um, so what it does is it checks if the first uh, entry in the in the text file that has the dates for the current the temperatures for the current date, if that first recording was at uh, 12 p.m. or 0 a.m. and if it's not, it counts the hours uh, from 0 a.m. Um, to the first time of to the time of the first recording and then adds zeros to the diagram uh, depending on how many hours there were. So we get more correct uh, display of data. Um, 
get temperature. Uh, this is what finds, so I use the final function here, which is why the temp label is so important. In the text files, as I showed you, because this is what we use to find all the temperatures. Uh, that creates a list, um, which is called temp list, uh, as you can see right here. Um, and then we have the update website, which is the function that actually creates the HTML and then saves that to a separate file. So you can see there's a couple of variables in the HTML document I want to show you. Um, it's the heading date, which is the current date and which is it's displayed in the heading of the HTML document. Then we have the labels, um, which uh, I should have showed you earlier, but it's the labels of the x-axis which are defined here, x labels, and then there's the x the labels of the x-axis. And then we have uh, the data temp list here, which is the temperatures. Um, that's it, so more all of this is uh, taken from JavaScript, so it's from chart.js, and then writes that to a document. It writes it to this document here. Uh, so if we go ahead and use the ncat uh, command, it's quite far back, I just don't want to type it all again because it's so long. There we go. Um, ncat command and yeah, nc command to um, to display this. So you can see here, website HTML. Um, this is the file that we want to display, which is the HTML file, which is this one. Uh, we want to display it at port 8080. So we go to, I already have it up here. Um, so this is from 10 p.m. So you can see, so if I refresh this now. Oh, I forgot to run it. There we go. There we go. So if I refresh this now, you can see that, um, yeah, the latest date is 12, uh, 11 p.m. Also, as you can see here, is that uh, so there's no no temperatures here. The graph starts at 2 p.m. That's because I started recording or plugged in, booted up my Raspberry Pi at 2 p.m., uh, which means it started recording from there, and this is where the script that I talked about that adds zeros from 0 a.m. to 2 p.m. comes in handy. So instead of starting uh, displaying the date from 2 p.m. right from the beginning and then stopping here, uh, which would be wrong, it starts from the first recorded uh, the f time of the first recorded temperature. Um, yeah, and when it's finished here, so in one, in under one hour, it will, um, this will be changed out for a new, the get temperature script uh, will create a new text file uh, for that date, which is, will be the 25th, and then this will display that date automatically. So we only have one entry here, so we'll start here at, I don't know, about around 28 degrees. Um, then we have the heading um, and this is the, also the date that is updated for every for every day so it's not the same. Um, yeah so this is also updated every day and that's all of my scripts actually I'm going to stop the nc command right now. Mm, so to sum it up this is very important this script that gets the temperature saves it to this directory and then this script reads uh, the latest file in this directory, uploads that to Google uh, Spreadsheet, and this uh, script um, gets the latest uh, temperature from uh, from this directory and uh, displays it in a graph, and uh, uh, which can be viewed in a browser. And uh, that's it.